Louise with Louise McKay Art. And uh, after that crazy bout of uh, bloom and <laughs> tiles and coasters, I'm going back now to, um, to try another pearl pour. And with this pearl pour, what I've got today is a white that is made with bear as the satin enamel and not the deco art today. So I'm gonna play around with that. I've got my gray base that also has a dose of deco art satin enamel. And in this, it's 15%. So we'll see what we end up getting. I checked my consistency. It looks pretty close. And I uh, already prepped my canvas by painting the edges, as you can see. And let's get going here. I'm kind of just going with the flow today. And uh, I want to lay down a gray first and then top it with the white. So let's just, uh, you know, no particular pattern here. Just gonna get this white down the gray, spread it around, see what we get. Maybe I'll add a little more gray to it as we go. Hey everyone, so I'm gonna pick up the pace here. As you can see, what I'm doing is I'm tilting the base coat of this Cloud Pearl recipe down. And as a reminder, uh, if you've been around with me for a while, you know this, you want to tilt the heck out of it to get that base coat as thin as possible. And then once we get to the puddle pour, we're going to tilt it again and make it extremely thin again to allow that base coat to come through, pop through the puddle colors to give us those nice pearls. If you're new here, welcome aboard. I appreciate you subscribing to me and joining our channel. And uh, hopefully you'll get some tips and learn some tricks and uh, just enjoy the process and learning as we go. So that's what we're doing here. And you'll know that as, as I do these videos, I like to pick up the pace when I have a chance, when we go through a little more mundane parts. All right, folks. And another quick reminder, these paints are very, very thin. The base coat and color colors are the same consistency. Pour back off the stick into the cup, no trace, no mound. I will link a video of consistency for Cloud Pearl in the description box below. Look at this here. It's definitely calling to me a certain direction. So let's go with the flow. something down there too I can tell you already tell you already all right again I'm going to pick up the pace here because you can see what I'm doing I'm just laying down the puddle colors and in this case I'm just laying them right on top of each other so the first color down that I had was that that's in my hand right now is the combination of uh, Prussian blue and Payne's gray by Arteza so it's a combination color the last color I just put down was uh, Modern Masters Copper. This color here that I've got is Modern Masters uh, Pearl with some titanium white. This color is Amsterdam's Caput Mortem Violet. And this next color here is Modern Masters Gold combined with a little bit of Golden's Iridescent Gold. And 
And the last color I'm laying down here is Arteza's Pearl Sea Green. And this one really surprised me because normally when I'm doing the cloud pearl pours, my greens tend to hide a lot. And this one really was quite vibrant. And if I lose you, I'm sorry. Do a couple little plays first. So it's in here I'm thinking, wouldn't it be really cool if I could stop time at the pour and then do a variety of different swipes or maneuvers before tilting. So like have options A through E and then decide, you know what, I want to see how this one turns out or that one turns out and get a variety of options to see how each different move would have caused the final result. I don't know, is it just me? Am I just crazy? <laughs> I think about these things. Got a lot of green up here. Oh lordy lordy. Let's see what we get. All right. Hey everyone, I'm back and I'm double timing again because you can see what I'm doing. I'm just tilting and I'm actually going very, very slowly, but after tilting off the first side, which is the top now, you're going to start to see the pearls developing because the harder you tilt and the more that paint gets stretched out, the easier those pearls are going to pop through that paint, that puddle paint that we laid down. So now I'm going for the other side. I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to go to each side, tilt very hard, get the paint to stretch out very far, and then tilt back. And in the tilting back, that's when it kind of stimulates, I think, that satin enamel and the base coat to pop through the puddle colors. see where we got. Let's give it a torch. Make sure I'm thoroughly dried off here. Huh. All right. Hey, so now for those that are wondering why I'm putting flame to this painting, it's because the heat helps stimulate the air bubbles to rise and pop out of the painting. And if you don't get the bubbles out of the paintings, what you'll end up with are potentially a lot of white specks, like where the, um, the base pops through as it's drying. Typically though, in the cloud pearl pour, I don't have much problem with air bubbles because it's so thin, but just a tip. Hey everyone, so I decided to pick up the pace again in double time and I'm going to leave everything intact. I don't edit anything out. I'm hoping the double time will show everything in the process I go through. 
I do a lot of dabbling with additional paint and realize, you know, I m mentioned that with the uh, satin enamel, sometimes when you lay down a strip of color, you might have to go over it a couple times because it tends to get absorbed into the paint. I also mentioned that I'm looking for pearls on the left side, your left side of the canvas that come up somewhat but don't quite get where I was expecting them to. And I know one thing I've noticed over the course of doing these cloud pearl pours is that the first side you tilt to seems to get the best pearl reaction, at least in my experience. So maybe for anybody out there watching, as you're tilting, as you get ready to tilt, pick the side you want to see the most pearl action in. Just a thought. And, um, and then I'm also just extending lines that are already there for the folks that have been watching me for a while know that I'm not heavy handed typically with the embellishments and the paint additions. I usually try to work with the painting and what it's giving me. I try to just enhance and find that smallest, the smallest of details often make the biggest impacts. I don't need to slash through it with a big bucket of magenta. I just need to see what the painting wants to give me. So that's what I'm doing here. And uh, this is completely unedited, edited this section. So you're gonna see everything I do, all the touches I make, and even the time I spend looking at it. Because a lot of times I cut out thought time and observation time, but there is often, you know, just a few minutes where I'm just looking at a painting. And I know other artists often will walk away from the painting for 15 minutes and come back. So I'm not gonna show that typically, but in this time I do leave it in. So I hope you enjoy the rest. I'm gonna be quiet for now and come back at the end. All right.
Okay, I think, uh, I think I'm close. One more rotation. Three minutes in. These do take a while, folks. I'm sorry about that. I'll edit it down as best I can. That's about it, folks. This is where we are, everybody. Hope you can see it. I think it turned out pretty good. I need to get a softer, lighter gray. Or maybe just go with a totally gray base. We'll see.